The Jeep Grand Cherokee L. L stands for long wheelbase, but from my first impressions, it can also stand for luxury. It's the new three row version of the Grand Cherokee, the L. And uh, right now they've actually launched the updated refresh version of the regular Grand Cherokee, the two row to match this. But this one here is a Summit Reserve, very high level trim. And we're gonna be spending the next week living with it seeing what it's like we've got the macintosh audio system this really cool quilting on the door inserts open pour wood feels great that button there is massage seats they're awesome we'll talk more about that later and the seats themselves quite comfortable the grand cherokee oh that didn't focus before we get going, we'll take a look at the window sticker. 2021 Grand Cherokee L Summit Reserve 4x4. Base price of $58,995. As option, we're at $64,280. One main option group, the Summit Reserve Group uh, 22U. Brings things like the 21-inch wheels, Palermo leather seats, the high-performance audio, 19 speakers, 950 watts, Macintosh, ventilated rear seats, the deluxe headliner, which is like a suede headliner, and Napa Reserve door trim. There's also this luxury tech group, which is really just a wireless charging pad, but a lot of things are already standard with the Summit Reserve trim. 64,280, MPGs are 18 city, 25 highway 21 combined this one here has the v6 you can get a v8 this is all new we've got the transmission selector rotary dial now air suspension adjustable height it looks like hill descent control four-wheel drive and low and then various drive modes rock sand slash mud snow auto and sport just leaving it auto for now got the 360 view camera pulled up and uh Reverse camera too, so that's nice. The latest Uconnect system, I think it's Uconnect 5 now. And then down here, heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel, your regular climate, plenty of USB ports, that charging pad. Uh, this wood trim is really nice. You can feel the texture. That's what I love when it's not like super glossy, then it's like, it feels like plastic. It looks really shiny, it collects fingerprints. This here is like a matte finish and it's got a texture to it. It just continues across the door. Before I leave, I'm gonna turn my massage seats on. Waterfall on high, that works for me. Back in the reverse, pulls up all the cameras and the surround view sensors there too. Look at that, like a topography texture too at the bottom of this digital cluster. That's a nice touch. We've arrived at work and I have to get inside for a meeting. I park next to one of my friends has a previous generation Grand Cherokee. That one is an eco diesel, which he's never gonna let go because it gets like insane fuel economy. But look at this digital cluster, it's really nice. This one currently has the MPG screen pulled up. I can go up for main menu, and you see the tachometer and speedometer become larger, and you scroll down through the different options, but if you don't wanna go through the individual menus, there's also this button on the steering wheel. It's got this kind of like panoramic look thing to it. You press that, and it pulls up all the tiles for you to quickly go through and see what I could have. I have my audio media stuff. Um, this is uh, suspension settings, everything too, automatic. Uh, all-time four-wheel drive adapts to road conditions. Interesting. Air suspension can be adjusted in terms of ride height too. I can drop it all the way down for entry exit, so it's lowering. But this is a very nice setup, full digital cluster. I think I'm averaging 19.4 MPG. Mostly city driving so far. Whoa, a lot of vehicle information. One of my first thoughts and kind of questions is, when Jeep came out with the Grand Cherokee L, we knew they were gonna do the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer, and it almost seemed like they were just trying to fill every single little um, possible opening in the spacing of these SUVs. And this and the Wagoneer are both three row, but the Wagoneer is even bigger, long wheelbase, they are quite hefty. We'll be spending some time with the Grand Wagoneer, the really fancy version, which is designed to compete against something like the Cadillac Escalade or the Lincoln Navigator, so I'm excited for that. So it'll be really interesting to see how the um, Grand Cherokee Cherokee L compares to the Grand Wagoneer. I haven't gotten to spend time with a regular Wagoneer yet, but there is still enough differentiation there, even though they're both uh, three row SUVs. I was like, wait a second, isn't this becoming redundant? Um, and then I thought like, what happened to the regular Grand Cherokee? Is the L the replacement? Anyways, it's all becoming more clear as Jeep continues to announce their vehicles. I'm gonna run inside for a meeting now and uh, we'll pick this video back up later. It's a sunny Saturday and we are taking the Grand Cherokee L down to Chicago. Uh, we're going to the Museum of Science and Industry. I have a couple friends in town. So we'll be spending some more time with it, seeing how practical, how luxurious, how comfortable it is. So far, I've been actually quite impressed. And Matt and Kent also have both liked it. We headed out last night. So uh, 
we need to get going. We are running a little bit late, actually. This is a pretty cool touch. The flag is pointing in that direction because that's the way it would fly if you were driving forward. So that's a really cool touch by Jeep, made in America. Got the Summit door sills there. We got a mat and a Kent. What? Yeah. <laughs> with the Summit interior, the Summit Reserve interior, which is definitely nice, except this wood trim here doesn't match this wood trim here from a color standpoint. This is lighter, and that's darker. Otherwise, I love everything else about this interior. So the new Grand Cherokee L has a very good driving assistance system. We are stuck in some traffic right now. We have adaptive cruise control, maintaining distance, speeding up, slowing down, and also you'll see the green steering wheel light in the corner, and then also it's bright out, so it's hard to tell, but we got little green lights on the left and right, so it's fully uh, assisting me right now, keeping the lane, sensing all of that, speeding up, slowing down, so traffic actually becomes not much of a problem. Yesterday we got stuck in traffic. I was in this getting my heated massage going on, and the car was effectively just handling everything, and poor Kent was in a brand new M3 with a manual stuck in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this definitely makes it a lot easier. Still on our way downtown, it's a very nice day out today. A little chilly as we approach fall and winter but the Grand Cherokee L does it very nicely. We've arrived at the Museum of Science and Industry. We just parked, but I'm gonna put this thing into off-road two with the air suspension. Let's see how tall it gets. So you can feel it, you can feel it going up. Vehicle is raising. All right, that's full off-road ride height. Are we in monster truck mode? Oh yeah. <laughs> That is quite a bit of ground clearance now. <laughs> Look at that thing. <laughs> that is off-road ride height. It looks pretty good too. I like the proportions as a, uh, a three-row. It's a rainy Sunday. Matt and Kent are leaving. I have to film, so we're going to load up the third row of the Dur Grand Cherokee L. I almost just called it a Durango. It's a Grand Cherokee L. To fold the seats down, we've got buttons here. Nope, that just folded the second row. Whoops, uh, the back row, third row. That's why there's a three. It's nice, one touch and they go down. Also, yeah, that second row folds down and uh, we'll load it up. So leave one half for my camera gear, one half yeah, for your for luggage. Sure. Car got a little dirty, it's rainy. So uh, maybe I'll bring some detailing supplies to wipe down this behemoth of a Jeep. It might take me a day and a half to quick detail this entire thing. Cause again, L is long wheelbase and that means it's big. It's also going to rain again later, so I've decided I don't want to wipe down a gigantic three-row Jeep. Plenty of space back here. I've got the bags for the boys to send them back to Arizona. Bit of my camera gear and still four seats up there with plenty of space. So they definitely needed to do the long wheelbase version uh, because the regular Grand Cherokee would not be able to do that. All right, back in we go. Off to get some food. We are hungry. Macintosh audio, that's cool. Got a Grand Cherokee animation that boots up, the full virtual cluster. Apple CarPlay is wireless, so that already just immediately linked up even though the phone is still in my pocket. Let the uh, V6 calm down a bit. The Macintosh speakers are pretty nice. Got a little logo that lights up in blue on the grill there. And again, I really like this textured. Somebody said, who said it reminded them of a 7 Series? Here is what the interior looks like at night with the ambient lighting, the big Uconnect 5 screen, the full digital cluster, and we can change the color of the ambient lighting. So I have it pulled up on the Uconnect screen. I'll show this angle here. So we can do the top independently of the lower. Blue, a teal, got a white, a yellow, and then the red to match. And then we can also change the bottom one, independent of the top one. The footwell changes down there too, which is pretty cool. You can go to the darker blue, the teal, the yellow, and then the red to match. And then we can also sync the two of them up. So we're just changing the top color here and everything matches up. Pretty cool. The blue also continues in the back. So that's the uh, nighttime view inside the Grand Cherokee L. Well, that wraps up living with the Jeep Grand Cherokee L. 
I'm very impressed. There is not a single American manufacturer that builds a through SUV that can even come close to touching this in terms of the luxuries, the features, and the execution. Um, the off-road, all-terrain capabilities are definitely the most impressive too. We were just up at Road America, and while I didn't get a chance to off-road the Grand Cherokee L, I saw it in front of me do the exact same thing that I was doing in a Raptor or a Wrangler 392 Rubicon or any of the other very hardcore off-road focused vehicles. These things are no joke. We also saw a Grand Wagoneer or Wagoneer go down the same trail, which it barely looked like it fit, but it also did the same thing. So we'll get that uh, in a couple of weeks. We'll spend some time with the Grand Wagoneer. But as the three row version of the Grand Cherokee, I am extremely impressed. All the friends that I had in it this weekend too, as we went around to downtown Chicago and things like that, they loved it. It was fantastic. Went to a Chicago Bulls game, drove it back uh, in traffic after the game and it, driver assistance features really did help there too. And then the uh, the material quality, the practicality, and I think the design is all very well executed. So good job, Jeep. This thing is extremely nice. I'll definitely have to try out the two-row version and see how it feels with the complete update for the regular Grand Cherokee. Fingers crossed they still do some sort of SRT high-performance version because those were always really cool option for a kind of premium performance, uh, but also having some luxury touches for a performance SUV. Otherwise, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video living with the Grand Cherokee. Thanks for watching.